Hello everyone, I'm Ida. I'm 20 years old now, and I'm still living with my parents. Well, sort of. I guess I know how it happened. I just missed the perfect time for me to leave the nest, as they say, and now I'm simply afraid of leaving my old folks on their own. Here's the story. For starters, I was a long-awaited for child. Mum and Dad had been married for 15 years when they finally heard that sacred you are going to have a baby phrase. And when I was born, both of them were already over 40 years old. So, yes, that was kind of a huge generation gap. When I was little, I often heard some of the other children asking whether that was my mum or my granny who had come to pick me up from kindergarten and other stuff like that. It's not that it has been annoying and embarrassing during my whole life, but their attitude toward me was. They were always afraid to miss something, that's why, for example, they never allowed me to stay at my friends' houses overnight. However, they were happy to have as many of my friends at our home, for as long as they wanted to stay. Mum was always cooking something tasty for us, and Dad would entertain us in every possible way, starting from riding on his back and ending with him telling funny stories from his childhood. You might say it's not a big deal, and it wasn't, until I grew up a little more, that I wished to have my own space. I remember when I was 12, I went to camp for the first time in my life. All my friends from school were going to be there, and I knew it would be an awesome week by the lake. Of course, it turned out to be enormously hard to convince my parents that everything was going to be okay, and when they finally agreed, I felt like I was the happiest person on the planet. But not on the departure day, when my dad said that he would want to escort the bus to the destination. So, yeah... One guy started joking about me having my own elderly bodyguard, and everybody on the bus was laughing. Even the bus driver. When I grew a little bit more, and the time had come for me to go to my friends' parties and to go on dates with guys, guess what my parents did? They would wait until however late it would be to drive me home. Yeah, I had no curfew for these cases. Some of my friends envied me for having such progressive parents. But for me... It looked weird when, let's say, a party was over and I started dialing my dad's number to tell him that I was ready to go home so that he'd come and pick me up. It's not that my folks were control freaks or anything. I guess they were just worried about me and they probably thought that they were acting cool enough to seem younger than they really were. But the turning point in this story came along during my 18th birthday. You see, I had always wanted to have a car and my parents, even though they tried to be cool never bought me one. They continued to wonder why I would need a car if I had a dad who could drive me anywhere I wanted to go. Anyway, I graduated from school and managed to get scholarships to two different colleges. One was like an hour ride from our home, and to get to the other one, I had to fly across the country. Now, try to guess which one I preferred, given that I already badly wanted to separate from my parents. I'd say that mum and dad were sad when they heard about my choice but that wouldn't be true. They were devastated. Mum began clutching at her heart, moaning with tears about how I was going to live so far away, alone in the dirty and shameless dorm, and Dad began worrying that he would no longer have a duty to be my personal driver, which he enjoyed so much. To be honest, it was hard for me also to make my old folks this upset, and for a second, I even wanted to change my mind about colleges, but I didn't. So, everybody in our family had started to get ready to accept a whole new way of living. A few days before my birthday, I found both Mum and Dad joyfully grinning whenever they saw me. Of course, I drew the conclusion that they were up to something interesting and surprising for my birthday party, like giving me a new car. And that really inspired me. Right on the big day, I woke up at nearly six in the morning and immediately ran to my parents so they could congratulate me as soon as possible. Both of them were already up and having their breakfast at the kitchen after a bunch of kisses, hugs and mum's teary episode about how grown up I was. They said that they had quite an exciting present for me that was going to knock my socks off. And then dad passed me a sheet of paper. Basically it said that our house had been sold. I couldn't understand anything at first, but my parents, in the midst of their happiness and excitement, explained to me that they had sold our house here and already bought a new one that was a 20-minute ride from the college I was going to study at. 
I couldn't believe my ears. My parents probably thought that I was that happy about their move. But I simply felt that my dream had just shattered into tiny little pieces. Not only was it terribly unpleasant to be disappointed in the gift, because I was expecting something completely different, and they knew that. But now I was also afraid to even think about what kind of reputation was awaiting me in college, as soon as everyone found out that my parents also came there with me. I started laughing harder than I'd ever laughed before. I thought it was something pretty hysterical, but my parents got really worried and scared. I simply couldn't stop myself, and very soon tears began running down my face, and I started to cry. Between sobs, I tried to tell my parents what exactly was wrong with this gift, but it was obvious that they could not understand anything. I think it took forever before I calmed down, and Mum and Dad ended up with a few more wrinkles. I just had no choice but to finally tell them everything that I thought about this obsession of theirs to be always within an arm's length of me. This conversation turned out to be unbearably hard. I felt how every word of mine was hurting Mum and Dad's feelings. When I was done with my speech, Dad silently left the kitchen and Mum started baking a birthday cake. And even though she was standing now with her back toward me, I knew she was crying. I went to my room, thinking that I was the worst person on the planet. In the evening, when my birthday dinner was already over and a few friends of mine who had stopped by were already gone... Dad said that they had one more birthday present for me. This made me a little bit nervous, because, you know, the first one they'd given me earlier turned out to be quite a mess. But this time, Dad handed me a car key. He said he'd been thinking with Mum throughout the whole day about my words, and came to the conclusion that I should stay at the dorm, but that I'd better have my own personal ride to be able to visit my old folks at least once a month. I once again couldn't believe what was happening again for the second time that day. I finally had my dream come true and had a car. But a few days later, when all our stuff was already packed and we were ready to move to another city, since, you know, the house had already been bought, I still felt there was something inside me that prevented me being totally happy and calm. I thought that it was somehow connected with the fact that I had hurt my parents by saying that I no longer needed them to be so close to me. Of course, my new life in college, as well as living in the dorm, was some kind of fairy tale for me. I thought that I had finally managed to get out of the watchful eyes of my parents, who earlier, at any time, could peer into my room to find out if I needed anything. And finally... No one would offer my friends any treats, embarrassing me, and other things like that. But that's not how it actually turned out. Even though my folks were no longer next to me physically, they decided to take full advantage of the digital era. I was constantly receiving texts from my mum, asking, like, whether I'd eaten and what I ate. Oh, she even demanded that I send her photos of my food, of my classrooms, and of my friends, of course. And once there was a totally embarrassing situation where I needed to get prepared for another lecture, and I called my mum and said that I couldn't come to visit them because I needed to stay at the library and stuff. And it was already really late in the evening when she somehow snuck onto campus and found me to give me dinner that she had made and packed up for me. Thank God there were not many people around who saw everything. Please... I don't think that I never tried to talk to them. Oh, I did. It's just, whenever I began asking whether they thought that I was already too grown up for their care, I'd see their upset faces, and... I don't know, I guess it was because of their age. I couldn't insist on anything. That's why eventually, right after my first semester, I came up with the best and only decision possible to keep my parents from visiting me on campus. Here I am now, a 20-year-old college student who hangs out with her new friends and goes to parties and meets new guys, but who keeps going back home to her elderly parents every night. Well, almost every night. Yes, I refuse to live in the dorm room, and now I live at my parents' new house that's a 20-minute ride from campus. And you know what? It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Have you ever been afraid to hurt your parents' feelings so much that you had to ignore your own interests? Share your experience in the comments and give my story a like.